Hi everybody and welcome to Selling School Spirit Wear. I'm Courtney Kibitza and today we're going to talk a lot about heat printing, some new fan wear looks since the fall season is just around the corner. Um, every year we get to do a fan wear trend type guide here at Stalls TV and so it's one of my favorite times of year just being able to look at some of the new garment styles, looking at some of the trends we're seeing in decoration and then sharing those um, ideas and things that we've seen with you guys so you can implement them in your business. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk all about how to heat print those fan wear looks from start to finish. And so I'm going to share um, not only tips on the garments that I'm using here today and tips on the transfers that we're using, but I want to share some tips on how some of the artwork was created as well. We're going to look at some trendy styles, some new styles, I guess, of trendy garments. And so understanding how some of the artwork is created and where some of these clip art and things come from can really help you when you're starting to um, begin in the design phase and designing for your customers. Um, so I'm going to switch to my computer real quick and I want to take a look at the first design um, that we're going to be creating here. And so it's no surprise if you've been in the spirit wear industry um, over the last two years, you've seen that oversized jersey. And we're going to talk about how to print those today. Um, but I want to show you how quick and easy it is to create the artwork um, to customize using a tool called CADWorks Live. And so I just went to CADWorksLive.com and on this site here I'm able to go to the main design studio which is where I'm going to be launched on my second screen. It'll open up a new tab. Um, this is a completely free design software so if you haven't seen this tool it is designed really for any print process but it really makes vinyl cutting and CAD cutting very simple um, because it's created to work with vector artwork and to be able to vectorize different pieces of artwork. One of my favorite things about this tool are the templates that you'll see that are available. And so within all of the pre-built templates that you'll see for different designs, when I scroll down and look at all of the different markets on the left-hand side under my templates, I'm going to come across a folder that's called Shoulder to Shoulder. When I open this, it actually has um, full designs already built in here for me to customize shoulder to shoulder prints um, for my customers. And I can do this by understanding the max dimensions that I have to work with. Um, and so this is working with an adult size of the oversized shirt. It has the arch already built in. This way when I'm printing from that large shoulder to shoulder print, it kind of works with the form of the body and fits the shirt very nicely. So this sets up that arch and allows me to start to be able to personalize any of the oversized jerseys. To edit this, all I need to do is change it to the school that I'm printing for. So let's say instead of Jefferson, I'm printing for Fox Chapel High School. If I want to edit the font, I can do so as well. Here I can choose from a variety of fonts that are already built in, from basic fonts to athletic fonts. If I want something that's still a little bit block and athletic, but not um, so much of a varsity font. I may try something that's a little bit more simple, like this athletic font here. And I can get creative with character spacing. I can create and add effects like contours, and just be able to build this custom for my customers. So I'll click OK now that I have this changed. Um, now when I change the font, it did go a little bit larger than the 23 inches. And so I'm going to just reduce this so it fits down into my bounding box by dragging the corner of my design. This way I know it's going to fit the back of the shoulder to shoulder shirt. And so the shirt that we're going to be personalizing today and you'll see is a new hooded style of the shirt. And so the hooded style um, kind of minimizes the print area that we're able to work with. Six inches by 23 inches is definitely ideal. Um, some of the other oversized shirts you may have been able to get up to eight or nine inches, but you want to stay within that six inch dimension since we're playing with a hood and we'll show you that when we start printing the shirt as well. Of course, I'll be personalized not only the back, but the front of the shirt. And so when we start to think of how we're going to take our fall spirit wear designs and really make them unique, um, one way is to keep artwork fresh. And so that is with your mascots or any of the artwork that you're using for sports or for spirit wear. Um, to do this, CADWorks Live actually has some clip art that's already built into the system, but again, I'm looking for something that's new and fresh. So for the clip art that I used for this program, um, I actually used some clip art that you can purchase from, um, or actually use if you have a purchase subscription plan through Great Dane Graphics. Um, if you haven't seen the Great Dane Graphics program just yet, um, they actually have a plan that allows you for $18.99 a month be able to get 200 downloads each month. And so it's a great subscription plan. You can even purchase it throughout the year. But they've got a ton of new art that comes in every week. 
and there's a lot of different mascots. So if I'm just looking for generic mascots, I could certainly search that in the toolbar and it would give me all of the artwork that's created there. I'm going to look for a Husky since that's the school that I'm decorating for here. So again, I'm just going to type in Husky, search, and this gives me all of the options. Now you're noticing as you're seeing all of these artwork and that some of them, while they look the same, are a little bit different. Um, one of the thing about the artwork from Great Dane Graphics is it's designed for specific print processes. So the, a lot of the um, designs that I'm going to be using here today work with the CAD cut process or the screen print process. Um, so if I just want things that are vinyl cutting, I can actually sort by the methods. Um, and you'll notice how there's a basic version as well as a detailed version. So here are the options I would have available if I'm looking for customizing for this school and want some new clip art images. Here you can see the husky head that I've chosen is more detailed. If I'm doing something very small, maybe a left chest logo or a hat logo, I may want to go towards the basic logo. Um, and I can take any of the artwork from Great Dane Graphics once I have my subscription plan created. I can download that and bring it right into CADWorks Live. So if you're not a designer, I don't have, um, maybe I don't have something as simple as Corel Draw or Illustrator. I don't have knowledge of that. I can download these files. You can see here on the bottom of my screen in uh, Google Chrome how it's downloaded the artwork there. Open that up and then I can save these images to be able to bring them into CADWorks Live. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to my um, desktop just by moving it to the desktop there. Once I have my artwork selected from Great Dane Graphics, I can simply go back into CADWorks Live and I can import in any artwork into this program. Um, even if I don't have vector artwork, I can even um, download vector artwork as well. So again, I just open and imported that image from Great Dane Graphics. Now I can use this to start really customizing, um, adding text, and this will be the clip art image that I've used to um, kind of keep everything cohesive for this customer. So let's say I'm going to just put Husky Pride, and I can simply add text just by clicking that Add Text button. If I want to change the color of the Husky or the text, I can do so. Let me just move this away here. But you're starting to see how easy it is to add customization um, and really be able to set yourself apart with these tools. So this gives you a good idea on how to get started, at least for the first design. I want to start to walk through how I took this artwork and um, made it kind of come to life with the heat transfers that I'm using and the garment styles because that's really where um, the beauty happens. Of course, it comes and starts with great artwork. Once you have the ability to use tools and clip art um, that's new and fresh, that's one place to start, but then it really comes to life with the garment and the transfer. And so I'm going to head over to the heat press so we can start printing our first item here. And so this is the style that I'm really actually um, pretty excited about. It's that new oversized jersey from Boxer Craft. And so this style um, just adds a little bit more comfort. To me, it's perfect for the fall spirit we're seizing. We're seeing the same um, striping that's pretty athletic and varsity on the sides. We're seeing that really popular color blocking. And they've added a hood, so it just adds some really unique um, comfort and something we're seeing really popular with that athleisure trend. And so I love this for fall. I think your customers will as well. Um, now to print this, the oversized shirts all print the same. It's just going to come to lay out with that hood to where we're laying out our back print. So I'm going to go ahead and load this on and start the preheat process. So when I do this, I preheat the entire print area on the back of that shirt. So I'm just going to preheat that for about three to five seconds on each side. That just helps to get good moisture out of the um, garment, helps to make sure you've got a good adhesion on the transfer. So always recommended to preheat the full item, even though it's a two-step process for this larger print. Once I have that in place, I'm going to line my shirt back up with the um, back of my platen. So you're noticing that hood, when it flips back a little bit, is taking up a little bit of my print area. So I want to keep that in mind with my graphic layout, just like with any um, hooded sweatshirt or placement that you're doing. Once I have that, another trick that we always use with the oversized shirt is to simply crease it in the corner here. And I chose uh, an iridescent or a metallic material that's going to give me more of a tonal look on the back of this oversized shirt. And so it's a little bit different than what we've seen in the past um, with some of those 
glitter materials or matte finishes. This is really unique and the iridescent and that tone on tone look is something that's really popular this year. Now CAD Cut Glaze um, doesn't have a sticky backing. So as I slide this, one tip that I use for this material is to just simply tape it down in place in a couple of areas. That way it's not going to slide and cause my graphic to get off um, center from my design. And this is just a heat seal tape, so it'll apply just correct, um, it'll, won't stick and it'll just hold that in place so it can be heat applied over top. Slide that one side over, make sure I've got all my wrinkles out of it. And then I'm going to cover this with a cover sheet because glaze is a cold peel, so I like to make sure it stays completely cold in its application. I'm going to apply it for 10 seconds. Um, at 300 degrees, it ranges anywhere from 265 to 300, so I've got it at the high end here. Remove my cover sheet. I'm just going to slide this over, let that cool completely. And I'm going to press this down for another 10 seconds on the other side. Once that's complete, I'm going to make sure I have to cool that whole back down uh, before I do the final app or before I peel the carrier. So while that's cooling, we can flip this over and talk about personalizing um, the front of the shirt as well. So that's a nice thing about a threadable heat press. I can actually let this cool down as I print the front of the shirt. So I'm going to load the front on here. Um, this really gives you a good way to use that CAD Cut Glaze product because I'm using it on a tone-on-tone -tone shirt. So with my graphic and my design, I can actually get pretty creative with how it's going to look because the nature of this iridescent metallic glaze material is it looks different depending on what you apply it to. So when I apply this, it's going to shine differently on the gray color than it is on the black. So it's going to be um, kind of a unique tonal effect and just make a, a really cool print area. So I'm going to personalize this again for another 10 seconds. While that's cooling down, I'll go ahead and peel the back side of my shirt so we can see what the back looks like. Here you can already start to see we're getting that metallic um, print area. Creates a really nice tonal effect for schools. And so this comes in a variety of colors. I prefer to use kind of a tone on tone with a silver on gray. You could do blue on blue. Makes for a nice print area. Flip this over on the front side of my shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and peel that back so it seems like it's cool as well. So you'll notice how it just shows up a little bit differently on that black color than it does on the gray. So it just makes for a little bit different effect and color um, on the item. So that gives you a good print area there. Also keep in mind some personalization areas that are added when you start with a hooded garment. I can add a player name on the side of the hood here. I could add some more personalization areas down the sleeve. Um, really opens you up to some, just some unique print areas with this new style of garment. And so we'll uh, Take a look at it here so you can see that full back print that we were able to personalize with that silver um, glaze product. This creates a really nice tone on tone oversized print. And then the front print here as well. And so this is one of the newer styles we're seeing from Boxer Craft, a variety of colors available. Pretty cool. We're pretty excited for that one for sure as well. And so that's one new style that we're looking at here for females. Um, another style that actually works as a unisex design um, is from Sanmar, and it's one of their new alternative styles. When we talk about fan jerseys, it's nature that come fall, spirit wear season, fan jerseys are by far one of the most popular items that are decorated. Um, and the style of the fan jerseys really changed and, and uh, kind of evolved over the past few years. This style gives me just a simple, um, nice, comfortable 50-50 blend t-shirts from Alternative Apparel. Um, purchased from Sanmar. And with this print area, the 50-50 makes it a really soft um, garment. It's got a little bit of a heathering to it. But I can get creative with my print area on this as well. And so what I want to do um, for this kind of unisex top, whether I'm doing men or women, is creating another tonal effect 
by using a metallic heat transfer material. So for the uh, blue part here, I'm using Fashion Film Electric. Again, it was just cut on a vinyl cutter. Um, so if you have a vinyl cutter, you're able to cut this yourself. If not, you could order this finish in different transfers. One really popular thing as you're thinking about designing for schools is being able to use their colors um, instead of their mascot throughout the artwork that you're printing. And so blue and white, instead of just using the Husky's name or Fox Chapel, is a great way to kind of play on the garment color and the colors for the school. I'm going to tack Fashion Film Electric down just for about two seconds. Since this is a multicolor design, anytime I do multicolor layered vinyl, I always look for that multi step application where I can just tack that background layer, peel back that carrier, and then line up my second color. It helps when I have a um, small contour like you're seeing here in this white part. It helps to make it much easier to line it up because if not, I can run into some issues um, with alignment if for some reason the vinyl shrunk a little bit under a 15 second application. The white's just regular CAD cut fashion film with a matte finish. And I'm going to cover it. And now since I only had a few seconds on that first application, I want to make sure the white and the blue get its full application at 15 seconds. And both electric and fashion film apply at 320, so they make good options for mixing the two together. Go ahead and peel back my white. We've got a completed design there. So as you're taking a look, you can see how that metallic just adds a little bit of a sheen and a shine um, on that blue shirt, just giving you kind of a unique tonal look. Makes for a perfect option for fan wear, pairing together that blue and white with a blue and white shirt. So the striping really plays on the white that we're seeing here. And so I really like um, this look. It's one of my favorites just for a tonal print. Um, the cool thing about the metallic and the fashion from electric is it's really understated. So I could feel comfortable doing this as a unisex design for men or women and just buying the shirt that's appropriate, so a v-neck for a lady or a crew neck shirt for men's and offering that for fans and uh, students at the school. So definitely a popular one there. We've even seen a lot of, um, as you're thinking about fall designs, we've even seen a lot of schools having theme days, so maybe all white for a game, all blue for a game. That's where those blue and white strong type shirts are really popular. So if you can sell extra shirts because everybody's wearing blue to this game or everybody's wearing white to this game, um, it allows you to be able to, to sell a few more items than your standard fan wear by keeping track of the calendars for your schools. All right, so I want to look at another option. We're seeing a lot of heathered textured garments throughout the fall. We've seen it all year this year. And so it's no surprise that this one's going to be another color block hooded sweatshirt with a heathered finish. This time when we think about decorating um, textured garments like this, we think about ways to add not only tonal effects, but maybe some patterns and glitters to it. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch out my platen here to be able to fit the hooded sweatshirt that I'm decorating. Just going to take the latch off of the fusion heat press here, and I'm going to swap in an 11 by 15 platen. This is a nice platen to have if you're doing a lot of hooded sweatshirts, which are standard, going to be one of the most popular garments that you're printing for fall. Because as I'm printing a lot of them, I can simply split them open, thread it on, and isolate that print area from that pocket. And so it makes it a really nice print location. I'm going to adjust my pressure back for the change in the platen that I've gotten here, make sure it's all good when I preheat. It's always a good tip when you're changing platens or preheating any item since the thickness of the item, especially a hooded sweatshirt, can change your pressure. Lock it down all the way and check that pressure. So for this one, we're going to create a mixed media look, pairing together um, CAD Prince Glitter Flake or a patterned Glitter Flake design with regular Glitter Flake. And so when I do multi-color designs like this, especially one where there's a lot of spacing difference, I like to line them up together and then I'll apply the two separately. That way I know I've got enough spacing. I'm not going to run out of space if I accidentally press this first side in the wrong space and then have to ruin a garment or try to remove it to fix it. 
So for my first transfer with CAD Cut Glitter Flake, I'm going to tack this down for just three to five seconds. All I want to do is get this carrier removed from that glitter flake so I can line up my full color CAD Prince glitter flake transfer. And so if you have a mascot logo, what I've done here um, is I've taken this mascot logo and I've added a chevron print to the image. And so I did that using um, my own design software just by bringing in a background and coloring the artwork to get that pattern effect. And then you can easily send that transfer to be printed by stalls as a CAD print glitter flake transfer. 10 seconds for my final application at 320. And I can peel back that carrier. So now we're seeing kind of that chevron pattern effect. Um, and you can get creative with different patterns from chevrons to um, tribal patterns, floral patterns. You could even create custom full color prints with maybe huskies or fox chapel written throughout the text just to be able to get some different pattern print areas. The options are definitely available. Adding the glitter makes it a little bit more sparkle, adds a different shine. And I want to add one more print area to this hoodie. Um, if one thing's for sure this year, I think we're going to see a lot more unique placements, whether it's the back of a hooded sweatshirt or sleeves. And so I think you're setting yourself up for a lot of success if you show and offer these personalization areas. Um, it allows you to command a little bit higher price, charge a little more money. I'm just going to swap back in my 16 by 20 here. And to print my sleeve, I'm actually going to use a heat printing pillow. The reason for this um, is I could certainly use a heat printing um, platen for sleeves, but if you don't have the fusion heat press, you won't be able to use that. I tend to find for very small ladies' garments, this is a small ladies' shirt, that as I personalize the sleeve with a platen, sometimes it pulls it a little bit more taut, and so I'm able to get um, less stretching if I use that pillow for this print location. And so I've just loaded that pillow on here to the center of the uh, sweatshirt here, so I've got the right print location. Now for a look that would work well for men or women, I'm going to add a tonal print with a clear material. Um, so this is going to add a little bit something different. This kind of works the same way glaze does, but it doesn't have any color to it or any metallics. Since I added in that pillow, I want to adjust my pressure to make sure I've got the right pressure that I need for this transfer. Anytime you add depth, you always need to check that pressure in. Also, if you're using a pillow or a smaller plat, and when you line up that transfer, make sure everything's where it should be on that pillow. It's getting a good, accurate pressure. And I'm going to cover this with a cover sheet. Since it's a cold peel, I want to make sure it holds it down until it cools completely. This material applies for 10 seconds, anywhere from 280 degrees to 320. So when I'm mixing it with a product like CAD Cut Glitter Flake, I have my heat press already up at 320, um, so I'm okay to do all of this in one application. Go ahead and let this cool down. If you have a pillow in and you have a cold peel transfer like this product is, it helps it cool down much quicker if you remove that Teflon pillow because that's holding a ton of heat in there. It's kind of the same principles when you move something from the heat press, it cools down much quicker as well. So this clear product changes depending on what it's applied to. So you're going to notice I put this on a dark gray sleeve. That way it would give me that um, kind of tonal look that's going to be a little bit darker. If I put this on a white, you wouldn't see much of it. Um, this is also a gloss material, so it's going to give me that wet look on the garment as well. So here we're seeing that Huskies design done um, with a wet look. So that creates a really cool effect down the sleeve. It's very understated, but very unique. We're seeing a lot of this wet glaze-like look or this um, wet gloss look on apparel through printing techniques. And so we're able to get that um, gloss on the sleeve there. And then we've got that full color glitter with a single color glitter on the print there. And we'll show you the sleeve down the front here. Joe, I have some questions coming in on this garment or any of the items I've printed so far. Yes, they're just asking if you could review what 
exactly was that uh, material that created the wet look? The wet look was SuperTech Clear Gloss. Um, so if you're looking on the Stahl's website, it's available under CAD Color Materials, under Tech. It's actually a printable material, but it, since it's clear, you can cut it only and just heat apply it. So there's a gloss and a matte version. Both of them create really cool effects. And also, could you give the style number of the first oversized hoodie that you did? I was actually just thinking I should probably give style numbers for some of these garments. Um, so the first one, the oversized shirt, was printed with CAD Cut Glaze. Um, and this one is from Boxer Craft. It's T18, so T18 on their website. It's available now. Um, the other item is an alternative apparel garment from Sanmar. I don't have that one memorized, so let me check the tag real quick, see if I can get you one. Let's see if I have it or not. I may not have it. I do know it's called, uh, it's from apparel, it's um, from Alternative Apparel and Sanmar. It looks like maybe the style number may be, I think that's my vendor number. That one I'll give you guys a style number and we'll go ahead and put that on the blog when we post about some of these garments as well if you can't find it. And the last one is a district hoodie and so this is another original from Sanmar. Um, nice inexpensive option, a variety of colors. And that one is DT296, so Donna Terry 296 for that garment there, for that hooded option. All right, so we have three down and a few more to go, quite a few more to go. Um, so another print that is one of my favorites is the knockout print. And so we've done a lot of video tutorials on how to create the knockout print. It was popular, or started to get popular last fall and this spring. It's still very popular this year. And we thought we'd take some unique ways to take that item and make the finishes unique. So it's not just glitter or not just matte finishes. We're gonna mix together um, glitter with actually an adhesive and a foil product. So for a metallic and glitter look, that'll be really popular. Um, the garment I'm using for this one, again, is available from Boxer Craft. This style I'm pretty excited about because nothing really says fall spirit wear like plaid. So they actually took, this is literally like a par uh, business in the front, but party in the back, where you've got a lot of plaid um, on the back of the shirt here. And so it just adds a lot of fun to the garment. So that's why we're going to add some fun to the front. You could really even personalize this with a big single color number and a big athletic number for the school if you wanted to just to add some more print areas. But we're gonna go ahead and personalize the front. Um, this garment is incredibly soft. Um, it is made of a blend of rayon, cotton, and poly. So it just gives you a really soft feel on the garment. I'm gonna preheat this and adjust my pressure since I had a little bit of a change there. Should dial it back. So for this full color design, I'm gonna be having glitter with an adhesive product. So I want to make sure when I'm lining up my graphic, for multicolor designs, I always line them out together and then remove that bottom one first, or that top one and apply the bottom one first. Since I'm mixing the adhesive and the foil product, I want to apply the glitter first. Um, this way that carrier won't overlap where my foil is or my adhesive is and pull off some of the foil. So always put the foil and the adhesive product down second. I'm going to tack my CAD Cut Glitter Flake for just three to five seconds, again, like I did for that first multicolor glitter flake application. Peel back that carrier hot. And then I'm going to line up my adhesive product. And so the glitter flake will get its full application when I um, do the second step. So I'm going to just inlay my material here. Looks like I've got a good registration here. Now the adhesive product at a light pressure gets tacked for simply five seconds. So I've got my adhesive. I'm going to tack that at my light one pressure for five seconds. You may notice I didn't use a cover sheet. My glitter wasn't exposed, so I technically can get away with that but better safe than sorry sometimes, so it may be worth going ahead and just using that cover sheet. You'll notice it kind of gives me a little bit of a wet look, so if you're doing a um, more masculine look, you may want to consider doing something like this and just using that Super Tech Clear Gloss for that single color gloss material. 
Now I'm going to overlay my heat transfer foil, and so this comes in a roll over the CAD cut adhesive. Um, the adhesive and the glitter flake are both cut on the vinyl cutter. I'm just going to cut my foil sheet here to size. The foil sheet, if you're looking at a big 12 by 12 design of this, is going to cost you about 10 cents for that whole sheet, so it's very inexpensive. The adhesive product, you're probably looking at about a penny a square inch, so still inexpensive to get this design. Now the foil is going to be a cold peel, so I definitely want to use that cover sheet to hold it down. And I'm going to tighten up this pressure, because it needs a firm pressure to really seep down into that adhesive. I'll apply that for 10 seconds. And then I can let the foil cool down completely. And so the light pressure on that adhesive, when you put that down first, keeps it from pushing too much adhesive through the item so that the foil doesn't have anything to stick to. And then whenever you get that firm pressure on the foil, it really drives it further down into the garment. And so we'll give that a few seconds to cool down here, just by taking it off the heat press a little. Of course, if you're doing a large production run of these, you would just press them all, come back and peel that foil right before you uh, put them in the box or hand them out to your customers. So I'm going to peel back that foil there. And you're seeing how we're getting a really cool print here with the foil and the glitter flake. And so it just creates a really unique effect that we're seeing with the two items on this shirt. So it kind of gives us a fun way to take that um, knockout print that's been very popular and make that mascot head, again that same mascot that I had pulled from Great Dane Graphics, bringing it in with some Husky Pride and really just create a fun print that uh, matches the fun on the back of this flannel shirt as well. And so this one again is available from Boxer Craft. And then we paired together the CAD Cut Glitter Flake in the center with CAD Cut Adhesive and Foil to get that really nice vibrant foil print. All right, a couple more fun things to show you guys here. Um, Sandmar recently came out with some new styles of garments that I particularly think are going to be very popular for the fall season. There's some new um, windbreaker designs, some new hooded designs. Um, the one I'm going to show you to personalize is actually a new zip-up jacket. And so this one, again, takes that same texture that we're seeing a lot throughout garments and takes it throughout the entire item. So this is the black color. There's a few different shades that are available, but it pulls it out and brings that textured item in throughout all of the color blocking that we see. So we're getting solid color black sleeves with a cool textured finish. And these are actually incredibly easy to personalize because all of Sandmar's jackets, um, or most of Sandmar's jackets, have what they call a port pocket, where I can actually unzip the pocket and thread it on, getting rid of all this mesh liner that could possibly cause print through. Uh, when I'm heat printing it. And so I'm going to change out my heat printing plat in here. And I'm just going to drop in my small left chest plat and perfect for personalizing a small print area. This works really well if you're printing not only for fans, but if you're looking for something new to offer maybe the coaches or the team players for some of their warm ups. This is a really cool, nice, lightweight warm up jacket. Once I have that loaded on here, I'm going to just adjust my pressure and preheat to get some of those moisture and wrinkles out. Good rule of thumb when you switch to a small item like a 6x10 platen, you want to try to dial back that pressure a little bit, especially on a garment like this that's made of 100% polyester. That way you can help to avoid any of the scorching that might happen. So I've loaded this on through the port pocket, dialed back the pressure on my 6x10. Then I'm going to line up my left chest logo. So I'm going about five inches down from the top crew of my shirt. Um, obviously careful not to go too far over towards the side with this very fit and narrow shirt. I'm going to just cover this with a cover sheet since I've got some performance wear on here. And this product I use is CAD Cut Premium Plus mainly because of the low temperature application, so I can apply it at 280 degrees for 10 seconds. 
This way, if I'm worried about this performance um, polyester scorching, I don't have to worry about that at 280 degrees since it tends to be a bit more heat sensitive. And if you haven't tried this product, it's cut on a vinyl cutter. Um, it's a good product to keep on hand just simply because we're seeing so many heat sensitive items this fall that have a lot of rayon or polyester or cotton blends that are very heat sensitive. Um, it's a warm peel, so I gave it a few seconds to cool down before I peel back that carrier. Again, using that same um, clip art image here to be able to get that print area on the garment. So I'm able to keep it with the Fox Chapel High School and the Huskies. Go ahead and zip this up for you guys to see kind of the front and how I added. I went ahead and chose a school color like blue. You could easily just add a simple color like a white or a silver as well just to add some personalization. We're still seeing a lot of people using charcoal and black as a standard color even when it's not their school color for blank apparel and also for decoration. So keep that in mind when you're selecting blanks. You could simply select a charcoal or a black color like this if your school shade is not available. And then use the decoration to match what you want it to match for the school. So this one's really popular and then the hooded version I don't have to print here today because I didn't want to run out of too much time for you guys is um, really fun as well. So you're seeing a lot of that texture throughout this pink color. Um, there's red and a few other shades, I believe blue available, um, but gives you some fun ways just to start adding what we're seeing a lot in the retail industry into your fanware and being able to incorporate that for your customers. And so I think this is going to be a really popular trend that you'll see this year. Premium Plus works great on it. Also, there's a lot of screen printed transfers like Elasti Prints from Transfer Express that works really well on these heat sensitive performance shirts as well. So if you're doing higher quantities where you think you're going to be doing 50, 100, 200 pieces for your school, I definitely would recommend looking at the screen printed transfer option. It'll cut your cost significantly. So that leads me into screen printed transfers. And so screen printed transfers um, allow you kind of a unique ability not only to be able to save money and cut costs when you're doing large quantities, but when I start to move into doing more um, distressed designs and maybe items that have a little bit more um, detail to them or something that's more unique. Distressed prints are incredibly popular um, for men and women, for spirit wear, and being able to simply take a design and distress it is really quick and easy. Um, I'm going to personalize this first and then I'll show you how easy it is to take a, a simple piece of um, artwork in the uh, Easy Team Designer from Transfer Express and add that distressed print. And so I'm just using another garment from Alternative Apparel. When I think about mixing together distressed items with a distressed or distressed transfer with a garment like this, I'm looking for a garment that's giving me that distressed look that's giving me that kind of heathered, um, tonal look that's just really kind of a vintage, unique print. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and take my oh, preheat to get some of those moisture and wrinkles out for the shirt that I've loaded here. Making sure I've got all my sleeves removed, my shirt's in my center. And then I'm going to line up my screen printed transfer. And so different from the cat cut transfers that I've used, this is Plastisol screen printed ink that's been printed onto a release paper and then heat applied. So it gives you the same print as a screen print would. I'm going to line that up just below the cross threads on this design. Goof proof that I'm applying here applies for four seconds at a firm pressure. Dial that back a little bit. Firm pressure, four seconds, 365 degrees. Hot peel that carrier. And then we have a unique distressed look on the front of this shirt. And so just gives you that really fun look. This one actually has a rain distress. So there's different ways you can distress your transfers and be able to make them match the garment or the look that you want for your customers. And so this one, um, I actually did as a three color design, but you could get creative with two colors or even just single color looks really great, really great um, with this distressed print on this baseball Henley. It's another option for a cool fan wear shirt with that distressed print. Um, I'm going to head over to the computer just to show you guys that software because I want to show you how simple and easy it is since I think this is going to be a big seller for you this year and it's a way to kind of make your designs very unique from the years in the past. All right, so if you haven't used the Easy View Designer, I'm over on TransferExpress.com. So Transfer Express offers this free designer to all of their customers. So if you become a dealer, set up an account, 
you get access to a ton of artwork, a ton of clip art. Um, it's just a really great tool and it allows you to create not only text very quickly for your customer or artwork very quickly for your customers, but it allows me to add this distress. So once I'm logged in, if I click start designing an easy view, it's going to open a new page um, to take me to the easy view designer. It really looks very sim similar to what we saw um, in the design that we had created with CADWorks Live. So it works a lot of the same system. I can go ahead and choose from their idea layouts if I just want to look for a variety of templates that are available. Or if I know the item that I'm looking for, which I just used that layout, QBK100, I can take this same logo that I just printed and I can personalize it. So I'm double clicking on the text here to change that out to say lady. If I want to change my font over here on the left hand side of my screen, you'll notice I have an edit text box. So I can simply see what it would look like if I want to make it maybe more of a script font. We'll go with this one here. Let's say I'm decorating for Fox Chapel instead of the Compton High School. So here I can make those customized changes. If they're not the Eagles, I can simply click this and swap it out with a new piece of clip art. And they have a ton of clip art available. They're always adding more. Um, in fact, that owl is new. I haven't seen that yet, so that's pretty fun. Just like we saw on Great Dane Graphics site, I can search for certain pieces of clip art. So I could add in this husky into my design. Maybe I want this to be a different color. So I'm going to go over to the edit clip art box back on the left hand side of the screen. Change that to a gray. And I can make any changes to the colors or the text throughout this designer. If you haven't seen this tool um, on stallstv.com, we have a ton of videos on how to use it. Um, just from start to finish, being able to add different text items, really customized for your customers. Even on the right hand side here where you can get um, uh, designs, really proofs created immediately. So I can actually select what I'm applying to, how many transfers I need. So let's say I need 102 colors and it's going to tell me my cost for each sheet or each image. So I can see that if I increase this to 120, if the price changes, no. So if I change it to 150, yes, it'll change. So you can see it might cuts my cost a little bit. Uh, one other nice thing about this designer is if I have where two of these logos would fit, you'll notice how it's going to automatically sheet them together and send me them with two on a sheet. So it cuts my image cost in half to $1.40. So that's another nice thing about the tool. You can kind of play around with it and cut your cost. So back to where we started, once I have my simple piece of artwork here and I want to add a distressed, I can add patterns, distressed, different effects just by clicking over here in that left screen. So there are currently six different distressed or five different distressed that are available. I have a rain distress, splatter, crackle, leather, grunge, and so I can change it depending on how distressed I want the transfer to be. So maybe I think grunge is a little too much, I want to go back to rain. And you can just see how unique and different these items are. And so it allows you to create these proofs, really just simply add that distressed in seconds. It heat applies very quickly. And so easy view, if you haven't seen that, it's just a really cool tool to get started. Um, and so I recommend going over there, signing up at transferexpress.com and playing around um, and really showing your customers some of the things you can do. You can send virtual samples from there so you could show them a photo proof of what their garment will look like before you even have to order transfers and print them. So pretty neat tool to use there. Like I said, we have a ton of videos on Stalls TV using that if you have more questions about the software. Um, so my last item, I've shown you guys a lot of shirts, but I want to print one more item here today. It's actually going to be for a different um, customer, but these arm sleeves are getting to be really popular. You're probably thinking I'm crazy. Earlier today, someone asked if these were leggings, which were popular when I was in high school um, a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago. And so these are now being paired with um, short sleeves, so being able to pair them with a short sleeve or a quarter sleeve shirt and adding some personalization. And they're just a simple sweater material, so they're very easy to personalize and add as an accessory to any t-shirt order that you're selling this year. So I'm going to head back over 
to the heat press and personalize these with CAD cut glitter flake. None other. And so I'm just going to load my large platinum on so I can print these both at the same time. So swap back in that 16 by 20. Just going to lay out my arm sleeves, making sure I've got the uh, right print location. Once I have them flat and in the space I want them to be at, I can follow the same steps. I'm just going to quickly preheat them. And these arm sleeves are available from Stanmar as well. It's one of their um, newer styles we're going to see this year. So we're going to add Hawk, Hawk Pride, which is different from the design that we've pressed so far today with the Huskies. So if you're not a Husky fan and maybe your school's the Hawks, this gives you some ideas of how you can personalize with different school colors. These pieces will actually also be featured in a new resource that's going to be available from um, Stalls TV next week. And so um, we're going to be showing you some more ways to decorate fall fan wear, of course, in 45 minutes. I would have loved to have been able to show you guys everything that we're seeing so far, but we're seeing even more than what we're seeing here. And so if you haven't registered for StallsTV.com, if you sign up next week, we're going to be having a fall fan apparel guide available on the site that's going to walk through all of the trends we're seeing so far this year, ways to print them, and just really show you some more ideas, even more than what you've seen here so far today. And so register at StallsTV.com for that. Um, Joe, have I got any questions coming in throughout the rest of the session? The question is on the arm sleeves. How are those going to wash and wear? The arm sleeves wash and wear the same way that a sweater would. It's just a regular cotton sweater material. And so Glitter Flake's got the same durability that we often see with um, any sweater, any shirt like that. So it would wash and wear the same, so 50 plus washes. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and check off here. Like I said, register at stallstv.com to get that guide. And we'll see you for the next live class on Thursday this week. We've got one mixing together screen printed transfers with CAD cut materials. Thanks for tuning in.